I'm Chris Dutchko, co-host of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Coming up on episode 198 of the House of EdTech podcast, it's time to buckle up and get this podcast up to 88 miles per hour. We've got the House of EdTech VIP, and it's time for the 2022 House of EdTech Final Four. Strike up the band. Welcome to the House of EdTech. My name is Chris Nessie. The House of EdTech launched in 2014, giving me the opportunity to speak with teachers, leaders, and creators so you can more effectively integrate technology, strengthen your pedagogy, and have more confidence in your classroom and school so you can make an impact. Get involved with the podcast by visiting my website, chrisnessy.com. Using technology isn't difficult, and this is where it begins. This is the House of EdTech. And I am so glad that you make this podcast a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. If you are a new listener, welcome. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. I want to thank everybody who reached out with kind and encouraging words after listening to episode 197. If you missed it, I recently had a rough interview experience and I shared my experience and my thoughts in that episode. Also in episode 197, I shared the story and recent events about Toby Price from Mississippi. If you want to hear from Toby himself, I recommend you check out Partial Credit, Episode 87, and Podcast PD, Episode 117. Two great episodes. Toby is a great guy, so he has a great conversation with the guys over on Partial Credit, and he also had a great conversation with AJ and myself. I also want to shout out the newest members of the Education Podcast Network. We are ever-evolving. And I'm really excited to connect with some new podcasters and shout them out here. So check out the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast hosted by Jessica Peresta. Also, I'd like to welcome the Ed Curation Podcast hosted by Christy Hemingway, Ed Tech Distilled hosted by Adam Geisen and David Lurch, the EduGals Podcast hosted by Rachel Johnson and Katie Atwell, the High Tech Podcast hosted by William Illingworth and Josh Swartz. Also, the Transparency in Teaching Stuff podcast, hosted by Ann Cartoon, and the Ninth Grade Experience podcast, hosted by Chris Stuchko, whose EPN bumper you heard at the top of this episode. I'm very excited to welcome these podcasts to the EPN family and lineup, and go check them out. I will have links to their podcasts in the show notes out at chrisnessy.com slash 198. And you can also get to their podcast by visiting the Education Podcast Network website at edupodcastnetwork.com. And now let's get into this episode's EdTech Thought. As I prepare for episode 200, which is going to be released on April 24th, 2022, I can't help but get a little reflective and a little nostalgic. This weekend, I spent time with Miles, my son who recently turned 10, and he and I watched Back to the Future and Back to the Future Part 2. I know these movies inside and out. The trilogy is probably my favorite movies of all time. And it was honestly a true joy to see him experience the time-traveling adventures of Marty McFly and Doc Brown. But there's one part of Back to the Future, relatively near the beginning of the movie, when Doc Brown is first showing Marty the DeLorean. Spoilers if you've never seen Back to the Future. (laughs) Although, maybe the statute of limitations has passed on spoilers. I don't know. But anyway, Doc takes a moment to reflect on how much has changed since he first invented time travel and the flux capacitor after, you know, slipping on his toilet, cutting his head uh, back on November 5th, 1955. And I kind of feel 
that similar feeling as I look around the world of education. And I realize a lot has changed since I student taught way back in 2007. I've grown and changed by leaps and bounds, and so have you. And that's the way it should be. You and I would both have a really big problem if we were the same people and we viewed education the same way as I did for me in 2007 and for you when you began in this profession. Now, along the way in our careers, we have faced our Biff Tannins and uh, we've gotten our glimpses of hoverboards, but it's actually one of the last things that Doc says to Marty and Jennifer at the end of Back to the Future Part 3, which Miles and I haven't watched yet, but we will. And we can certainly apply this to obviously ourselves, but also to the future of education. Dr. Brown, I brought this note back from the future and now it's a race. Of course it's a race. But what does that mean? It means your future hasn't been written yet. No one's has. Your future is whatever you make it to make it a good one. Both of you. And I bring this up because it, it's true. In our personal lives and in this profession, whatever happens tomorrow is what we make of it. We can have good days, we can have bad days, but ultimately, we are in control of our own destiny. And I'll be honest, I have been feeling a little down about education over the last few months. And, you know, spending time this past weekend with my son, getting nostalgic and Watching a movie that just has a good message to it kind of brought me back to the to the present and uh, got me to think about the past, and certainly that will make for a better future. And that's my EdTech thought. Now it's time for the 2022 House of EdTech Final Four, the original EdTech tournament for the month of March. This tournament goes all the way back to 2014, and I did the first EdTech Final Four back in episode seven. So that was a lot of episodes ago. I'm not going to do math. I was going to say 200, but I don't think that's 200 episodes yet, but it's a lot of episodes. (laughs) <laughs> and as I was preparing this episode, I thought, let me look back and see some of the things that have been talked about here over the last eight years. And, you know, this is the ninth installment of the House of Ed Tech Final Four. So as I was looking back, so th- this is really, uh, we're, we're still in the time machine, if you haven't figured that out yet. So back in 2014, episode seven of the podcast, these were the four things that I recommended and talked about in detail. They were Flip Quiz, My Script Calculator, Evernote, and Card Table. Flip Quiz doesn't exist anymore. My Script Calculator doesn't exist anymore. Evernote is still going strong. And Card Table is still going strong. So if you go to chrisnessy.com slash seven, you can obviously still get to Evernote and card table, but two items have been erased from existence. On to 2015, episode 32 of the podcast. I recommended Tozzle, T-O-Z-Z-L, Microsoft Office Mix, Erasma, and Meerkat. None of those exist anymore. Tozzle is a completely different company, and you know, may God have mercy on your soul if you have something on your website or your blog that references the Tozzle from 2015, and it's not the new Tozzle, they come after you hard. So be careful. Microsoft Office Mix doesn't exist anymore. Erasma doesn't exist. And of course, you know, Meerkat went by the wayside. Uh, Obviously, they were overtaken by Periscope. But on to uh, uh, 2016, episode 57, I recommended Blab.im, Anchor, Walla.me, and Versal. And the only things that still exist there are Anchor. And I don't think Wallamy exists still. 
No, it is. That, that, that's a – Wallamy still exists. It's an app you get for your iPhone that lets you put some augmented reality stuff in the real world. So it is an app. But Blab, RIP Blab, I uh, used to do some live streaming on there. Anchor obviously still exists. But when I recommended Anchor in 2016, it was not a podcasting platform. It was almost a precursor to uh, – club. it was like Clubhouse and Voxer had a stepchild of some sort where you could just kind of post these audio clips and people could listen to them and leave their replies to them, and it was out in public. I don't remember what Versal was. I looked it up, and it doesn't exist anymore, so I can't even tell you what it was. <laughs> um, on to 2017. Episode 82, I recommended Nimbus Screenshot, Pixlr, Sketchboard, and PictoChart. All four of those still exist. On to 2018, episode 107, I talked about Wii Video, Google Expeditions, which technically doesn't exist because they uh, incorporated it into Google Arts and Culture, uh, Book Creator, and Kahoot. In 2019, episode 130, I talked about Get Vocal, StreamYard, Discord, and OBS. All four of those are still going strong. Uh, certainly, uh, I still use StreamYard to live stream for Podcast PD, and Discord is uh, bigger than ever and certainly has made its way uh, not just being for gamers and the gaming community. In fact, there's a Discord community for this very podcast. If you go to chrisnessy.com slash Discord, you can join the House of Ed Tech Discord community, and I would love to see you over there if you're not there already. In 2020, ah, the infamous 2020, episode 154, I talked about Flipgrid, the book creator app, YouTube Live, and Edpuzzle. And for that one, I finally got around to making it something that people could vote on. So that was really like a a tournament and a pick 'em. So that was cool, and all four of those apps still exist. And then episode 176, this was the EdTech Final Four from last year in 2021. And last year, I put another different wrinkle in, and there is another wrinkle coming. But the wrinkle last year was I basically comboed, like there's the NCAA basketball tournament, and there's also the NIT tournament. So there's actually two tournaments happening here in the month of March. And the way I integrated it into last year's episode, if you didn't listen, was... I still had my four brackets of creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. But for each area, I came up with a tool for your students and a tool for you. If you haven't listened to that, um, I don't know what you're doing, but you can go back to chrisnessy.com slash 176 or scroll back to last year around this time in your podcast player. And again, it's episode 176. But in that episode, I talked about book creator using social media like Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, uh, leveraging your LMS with your students, for you checking out talking points, which I have loved using this year. Uh, in the collaboration region, I talked about Wakelet for your students and uh, skilled space for you as a teacher. Uh, skilled space is still out there. Uh, and in the critical thinking region, I talked about Blook It and for you listening to podcasts but definitely go check out last year's and the wrinkle for this year. Again, I wanted to take the time to again, reflect on what has been as you know, I'm getting to episode 200 and I'm starting to think back over the uh, whole life of this podcast. And I basically, I, I feel like I'm giving you today, not the final four, but I'm giving you the champion. So we know that there are so many tools out there, but there is a new tool on the scene that I think you need to check out. And it is called screen pal. And ScreenPal comes to us from the same folks that bring us Screencast-O-Matic. So ScreenPal is like Moat, but for video. So anywhere you can type text, you can put video. You can say it clearly the first time with quick, authentic video messages. You can easily record videos from any text box or comment field in your favorite browser-based applications and then share it. This means less typing could lead to fewer meetings. It could lead to better communication. And you can say it all with ScreenPal. This allows your comments to come alive. You can add context and personality. Again, anywhere you can type text, you can add a video. You can easily capture your screen, your webcam, or both. 
Remember, this is powered by the people who make Screencast-O-Matic. You can do this all right inside your browser. This will help reduce potential back and forth communication. It'll allow you to do it clearly. You can build better connections all without leaving the browser. And again, ScreenPal works where you work. Click any text field, any comment box, record your message and share. It's seamless, efficient. It's a synchronous communication through video messaging. And there are a number of things that will easily integrate with this, which I will include a link out to screencastomaticcom slash integrations. That'll be in the show notes out of chrisnessy.com slash 198. After your recording, uh, basically they send you an animated GIF and, you know, this is for sites that don't allow animated GIFs. They will just give you a link to the video. So you get this little preview. So it's really cool. You can also edit your videos when necessary. And if you need to do a quick trim or you want to crop out a username, you can easily trim out the beginning or the end of your videos and crop your capture, save it, share it and go. So I feel like I'm dropping this new tool, which I think would be a winner. Would it be a final four ed tech tool? Absolutely. But I am declaring ScreenPal the winner of the 2022 ed tech final four here on the house of ed tech podcast. If you got a tool you're loving, let me know. I know that they're out there. I talk about tools every episode, so make sure that you take the time to share with me the tools that you are loving and learning with and from, whether it's you or your students, you know I want to hear from you. And if you didn't, now you know I want to hear from you. And that's the 2022 House of Ed Tech Final Four. I hope you enjoyed the trip down memory lane. Speaking of getting in touch with me and participating here on the podcast, there's a segment I like to do called Just Give It a Try. That's that's like one of the catchphrases of the show. Using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. Well, this is the part of the show where you get involved by sharing something that worked or maybe it didn't work in your classroom, your school, your district, technology, education related. I want to give you a spot in every episode to share your story. And it's been a long time since I got somebody to submit one. So I just want to put the call out again, which means if you send one in, it'll get here on the show. And it doesn't matter when you send it, I will make sure it gets on the show. So send me your Just Give It A Try stories. Go to chrisnessy.com slash feedback or chrisnessy.com slash voicemail. Voicemail would be preferred. So that way you record your voice and you can share your story right here on the show. Again, could be a success story could be a failure story, but remember, we always learn when we falter. So I welcome their stories here on the podcast. Of course, no episode of the podcast is complete until we meet the House of EdTech VIP and today I want to give a nice shout out to Miss Heather Brooks. She is on Twitter at H Brooks, the number nine. She's an elementary school librarian, reading teacher, doctoral student, and she loves baseball, music, and travel. She recently connected with the podcast on social media, and I want you to connect with her. She's been on Twitter since 2009, and she should probably have a lot more followers than she does for having been on social media and Twitter for over 10 years. So go give Heather a follow and congratulations to you, Heather. You are the house of ed tech VIP. Thanks for listening to this episode of the house of ed tech podcast. If you're not subscribed or following, I hope you'll continue to make this podcast a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. Let's keep the conversation going. I want you to share your thoughts on this episode or whatever is on your mind from any episode you've ever listened to. It's never too late to share your thoughts on this podcast. You can leave a comment on the show notes out at chrisnessy.com slash 198, or you can send me an email, go to chrisnessy.com slash feedback, or send a voicemail, which is preferred by going to chrisnessy.com slash voicemail. If you enjoy the House of EdTech podcast, hey, help me out. There's two things you can do. Number one, 
tell somebody else about the podcast. Word of mouth is the best way to share a podcast that you love. So share it on social media, share it with the people at your school. Just tell somebody else about the show. That's all I ask. Tell one person before you listen to the next episode. You could also become an awesome supporter of the podcast. I am very thankful for the ongoing financial support of the following people. Thank you to Anthony Arnaud, Dan Gallagher, Carlos Garza, Peggy George, Jeff Herb, Mike Messner, Matt Miller, J.P. Presavento, Patty Reefus, Lori Simpson, and Kyle Wilcox. The Awesome Supporter Program is powered by Patreon, and that allows a supporter of content like you to support a creator of content like me. Go to chrisnessy.com slash awesome to make it happen. The next episode of the podcast is going to be episode 199. That's going to come your way on April 10th, 2022. And as I mentioned earlier in this episode, episode 200 is coming your way on April 24th, 2022. I think I'm going to do a little contest. So stay tuned to my social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, at Mr. Nessie on Twitter, at House of Ed Tech on Twitter, at House of Ed Tech on Instagram, at House of Ed Tech on TikTok. Just make sure you're following me somewhere for information about a contest related to episode number 200. Until next time, thank you for learning with me. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. And now, let's listen to the music. Thank you.